Welcome to Mark and Pete Live. We're talking about today the secrets of the magic circle. How with me, as ever, is business for Mark. So what have you got for us this week? Well, clergyman Pete, we have something of mystery. Yes, it's the magic circle. Now, many people are intrigued as to what type of conjuring tricks lie behind the world of entertainment. But what's more important as well is that the Magic Circle announced that is they've just appointed the first female president of the Magic Circle, and her name is Megan Swan. Now, that's a really good thing to see, that we're starting to see more people who are young in the community out there offering to lead the society. And what's interesting is, is that this society was founded in 1905 to promote the advance of magic. And Miss Swan, as she is now appointed, will lead more women and young girls into the practice. But this dark art, I must say, is something that many people wonder exactly what lies behind it. And what I'd like to also highlight as well, a little bit of a secret, is some of the people who are actually members. But here's a thought for those people who perhaps, you know, just are a little bit intrigued. It's all about now you see it. The magic circle is not really round. It can conjure things that will astound. Just as you think all's fair and square, suddenly the magician is no longer there. So don't jeer the mystery of this sphere, for one day you too might disappear. Clergyman Pete, what do you think of this dark art? And are you entertained? Or do you think that perhaps there's something sinister behind it all? Well, I love uh, magic, but sometimes uh, in Christian circles, you have to refer to magicians as illusionists or conjurers, ah. because the idea of magic is anathema to many Christians, uh, because it has associations with uh, evil spiritual powers uh, the, the magicians in in the bible referred to in the bible the magi you know who came to see jesus uh, at his birth uh, while well, they had a sort of hidden knowledge they're seen positively but others who uh, try use their hidden uh, hidden the hidden dark arts to for example challenge god's power in miracles they're of course seen very negatively and it's as though uh, the uh, the magicians because they've got the same name, magic and magician, that they are seen as perhaps having some sort of evil side to them, or maybe they're tapping into evil spirituality. Whereas that's not the case, apart from one thing, I suppose, Martha, you could say, well, it's all one big lie. I mean, there isn't any, there isn't any actual magic there, it's just tricks. It's so true. I guess there is that side of it, that it's all a deception. But anyway, the, those are the negative things that are seen for some people in Christianity. But, and here's a key thing, in fact, many people, including myself, use magic tricks in preaching the gospel. Oh. It, you know, it's, there's a, there's a, a, a movement, there's quite a few people who do it. There's a, a, a group called Mission Magic, uh, which you can search for. Maybe we'll put a link in the description where you can get some pretty good magic tricks for explaining the gospel me message. Uh, and they're specifically tailored to that. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's brilliant way of explaining things because that little uh, that little air of mystery something that you don't quite understand um intrigues you even more so you're ready you're ready to hear uh, yes. whatever message the person is trying to get across so for me it's brilliant as well as just being entertaining i think it's a brilliant way of illustrating whatever message you're giving well Clergyman Pete, I must say that the Magic Circle, um, which, as I said, is over 100 years, um, you're right about the trick, but this dark art has been used in many different ways. Um, I'm going to give you an example. Um, many people will probably know that actually conjurers, as you say, or illusionists, were used during the Second World War. Oh, nice. um, and this was actually primarily in the North African region when, when <laughs> magicians were actually employed to come up with techniques to try and bamboozle the Germans. And one technique they did was obviously this idea of putting fake tanks in place. Now, many people may not know, or if you actually have looked at uh, some of the um, the documentaries on secrets 
of the Second World War, will actually reveal that uh, they weren't real tanks in many cases, um, basically to sort of tactics, if you like, uh, diversionary tactics. So magicians have, um, have been used in many peculiar ways, not just for entertainment. Um, what I was a bit curious about is who are these members? And not surprisingly, well-known magicians like David Copperfield, but I was also um, intrigued that the Prince of Wales is also a member, and of course, Sooty. <laughs> so for our British um, audience, this is a, a little glove puppet, uh, I'm afraid. Yes, not a real real character, but is is a, is a sort of adorned our screens for many, many years. And I remember as a child having a little sooty uh, with a magic wand, uh, which he always used to wave this magic wand with the immortal words, Izzy Wizzy, let's get busy. Yes. And then, of course, well, out be, came a little be careful with <laughs> Be careful with the magic words. You, you never know. Oh, yes, about. exactly. But, yeah. It's interesting, isn't it, that uh, magic does intrigue us. I mean, most people... Uh, try and learn magic tricks, so I guess, or at least have have a some sort of magic trick set when they're young. Um, I used to try, as you may remember, because we were at school together. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, I was that guy. Um, yeah. I was trying to used to practice and try and make cards appear out of thin air. Um, <laughs> the problem is, it's quite tricky to do, and they end up just flying all over the place. Um, <laughs> yes. uh, and making them disappear is actually harder. But people, are skilled magician, they can do it with a whole pack. Yeah, cards yeah. in one go so um i tend to uh, i said about using magic tricks in sermons i always make sure it's a sort of magic trick that's been made such that it requires no skill mm. so i yeah uh, the magicians do have to learn a certain so that's where the magic circle comes yeah. in i think the magic circle uh which is like uh like a union isn't it for um or a cross between a union and an agency and a professional body for magicians yes. um, they, they sort of they advocate for them but also you have to pass an exam to get in oh um, yes yes it's, it's, it's interesting a rigorous, that it's... rigorous process so you can't not anyone can join yes yeah, so you have to have something unique i believe and uh, you've got to be consistent as a magician um, but one thing here is is that i will say that um it seems as though this this dark art as you slightly alluded to is is really sort of entrenched in a, a very young age isn't it you know i remember having um a magic set where you had little cups and balls and making a, a little coin disappear and even yes. of course the silk <laughs> silk scarf appear from out of somebody's ear yes. um and um you know you suddenly start to think ah this 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 sort of captures people's minds doesn't it and so it's almost well, like it's right at, a, at the early stages of uh, of our lives that being um being intrigued by the magic the magic art is something that I think is going to continue, and long may it continue, as far as I well, yeah, can Yes, the, the, the magic circle then has actually got something going for it, really, which is it gives legitimacy to the magicians who are part of it, and also it gives a uh, it, it itself has that sort of kudos uh, by be by appearing mysterious, but it's because of the secrecy, and we're just drawn to secrecy, we just the unknown just draws interest, doesn't it, I, I think? Uh, if I just go down here on the website for those watching the video, but I'll tell you about it even if you're on the audio version. Uh, if I just scroll down, you'll see there's lots of uh, of different things, of uh, different uh, magicians being advertised. But here, how... Um, I'll click the wrong thing. How to find us. I was going to say how to join us is what I was going to try and find for you. Let me just see if I can work. Because in order to join the magic circle, you have to uh, pass an exam. Mm. Um, yes. Yeah. So, uh, do you, uh, what do you think are your, are your um, chances, Mark? Well, the, uh... I must admit that I'm always fascinated by those who conjure a rabbit out of a hat or pigeons out of somebody's pocket. Yes. Um, but what I'm really sort of intrigued about is is that uh, <laughs> is is the is there something new that uh, we we could see that you know maybe somebody like Boris Johnson could pull out some sensible policy maybe yeah. um, I don't think that's going to happen but no it, go back to, yeah the magic circle you need to have someone propose a second you yes. you have to be interviewed and then you have to take an exam and yes. the exam. As you see, it's on the screen if you're looking. You have to take an actual examination, which can be 
you, know, you physically being able to do tricks, or it can be a written exam. Uh, you have to do that within a year, uh, and yeah. then you get the privileges of being a member. But yes, um, someone like a, a politician, you can see how <laughs> uh, the trickery they involve, similar to the being a magician, that often there is some sort of deception involved in order to get you to vote for them, uh, or sometimes in order to try and control the population, there's some deception. Uh, thinking of um, how the uh, how the government in Britain uh, chose to try and control its population during the pandemic mm. by using manipulative methods, similar, I suppose, to uh, to magicians, you know, distraction. Look over well, here at this, and you will know what we're doing. I am That's impressed amazing. where, and I know it's been done before, where we've seen, uh, maybe it's all smoke and mirrors, but, you know, and I think it's David Copperfield who made the Eiffel Tower disappear or thing, or was it, no, the Statue of Liberty or something like that. I mean, the the, the there is, seems to be almost no boundaries and that's what I like about it in the sense that your imagination can take you anywhere. So what I think we should do is encourage um, some of our listeners to say, well, what's the best magic trick that they've ever seen? Or what would they like to see <laughs> happen? Uh, that I think would be a, a good one. Yes. But for now, we're going to disappear. So please leave your comment and reply to Mark's question down below in the comments section. Or if you want to go over to uh, to markandpete.com. There's a comment section there as well. We'd love to hear from you as usual. But it's goodbye from Mark and Pete for now. Catch you next time. Ciao.